How was your uh how was your holiday? Good holidays, man. Yeah, the uh gotta go down to the valley and enjoy some of that nice weather down there and didn't wake up all hungover on New Year's Day. So I'm enjoying that. Good start to it. How about you? <laughs> all things considered is pretty good. Yeah. Got spend some time at home with my family and you know it's cool got to play with the birds a little bit I was gonna ask you about that I mean since you've been working away from home for a while and you come back and you got some time down you got any projects going on with them birds um I just put them all up for breeding so uh, I got two pairs of babies right now oh that's cool two pairs of roller babies okay yeah I don't know a couple of my birds in the house got the sniffles yeah I got a medicine from from Joe that is actually working really 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 good what is that it kicks out of them real quick so it's um Vatril it's freaking good Vatril Vatril with a B boy okay um, unfortunately the sniffles came from from Modena Oh, really? Mascot? Yeah. Three days on it. She seems to be cool. Just the thing, I guess, is going to have to go through whoever gets it. Yeah, and that's a weird one, you know? I mean, that little bit of sneezing every now and then, it's like, you don't know if that's... Oh, is it more than that? No, this... So, they go hot chew when they're, they're not feeling good. Or they'll... They honk or they'll breathe with their mouth open, you know, stuff like that. Okay. But the, the that sneeze, mm-hmm. that, it's like, it's like spitting. I mean, it either comes out their nose or it comes out their butt. Yeah. And that's how they get rid of the virus and bad bacteria and stuff and, and shit like that. We do too, to, to a certain degree. You know, they, they're always shedding, shedding disease. They have a natural ability to do that in a in a regular kind of setting. You know, one that's not overpopulated. Blah blah blah. So yeah. I don't I don't sweat the sneezing. It's the stuff that's not productive or plugged up or something like that. Because these little birds in here, they literally go hot you oh, when okay. they're not feeling good. It's a different kind of sneeze. I was gonna say, so, yeah, if they're not they're uh, right away, if they're not getting baths on a regular basis, like that, as indoor birds, then just that dander that they create, that's enough to get them to sneeze. Or, like I smoke a cigar in my shop yeah. a lot, and I know that'll get them to sneeze sometimes too. All right, here's the uh, soccer, football, whatever opener for the podcast. Hello. Oh, and welcome to the All About Pigeons podcast. I'm Phil. I'm Chris. I think I could have carried that a few more notes, but time is precious. <laughs> well, there we've been getting a lot of a lot of questions about uh, different things, kind of actually all over the place. There's not really even a theme to these, but I kind of I took some of the ones we're going to be talking with. Uh, Bob Nolan, we're getting, you know, he's he's a big guy in the uh, pigeon world, and, and we're going to do a whole talk on conditioning with him, and we'll, we'll direct more conditioning questions towards him. We're bringing another person on for nutrition, so I kind of put those to the side, so we'll get to those questions, but we're going to wait till we get some real experts on there for those, but some of the questions I feel like you and I can feel, I thought we could run through those. You want to give it a try? Yeah. Right. So one was a question that said how long should you keep new birds inside after getting them and this is not related to quarantine this is just relating to like rehoming a new bird um, okay so like before you fly them yeah that's what that's where I was like it really because rollers you can get old rollers and resettle them I mean there's some racers that I wouldn't try that with you know uh, so wait, what I say on the on the, the old rollers, 
No, it was two weeks. Yeah. That was two weeks to the day I turned them up. And with a group that big, it was fairly easy because they they flocked together for the most part, and they were all they were all in the same shape, so they kind of flew together too. And That's a big part of it too. That was a pretty big there flock. Too many. Yeah. So if you've got two or three birds and you turn them loose, they're gonna lose track of each other the first few times out. It's just inevitable because one of them's gonna one of them's gonna track somewhere else. You know. But if you got like it's it's a lot better if you've got an established you know stuff that you've settled there because they know where they're going and if they fly if they track you know in the same track all the time the other birds seem to catch on a lot better too you know yeah monkey see monkey do is really helpful when it comes to training birds yeah yeah, well, birds, they like flocks. They, that's why people use decoys for ducks and stuff like that. They go where the other birds are, and they're going to be more apt to stick around your place if they've got a bunch of buddies. So, like, the rollers, I tried some at three days. I didn't lose them. I was pushing it, you know, but I they also came off of a, you know, a, a strict feeding schedule, and, and I did everything just like I thought it was to be done um and i could have lost every one of them that i flew but you know i cage trained those i took them out every time i flew my kit i would set them on top of the kit box and they would sit and they would watch their buddies fall out every day then I, every day that i had them out in the cage i i would trap them in just like the other ones you know trapped and they were already trapping too by the gentleman that gave them to me. So that was a lot easier than it should have been. Like now, like homers, man, I don't know. I've had some homers that get out, they want to come right back. And then I've had other homers that I've turned out, they made one lap and bounced. They never came back. I would definitely tape their wings or, uh, or soap their wings or something like that. You can see all that stuff on YouTube. Yeah, so when you um, tape, you're taking like those, the outside primaries, those those three flights out there, and you just put some mask and tape or scotch tape, or you can use like a hair tie even, and just so that way they can't fly too far and they kind of get grounded in that area. Right. I've never done the soap. I've done it's, the tape before, but the soap is the same thing. It just limits their ability to just take off on you. It's just like in their wings, really. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing, only only you know in theory it doesn't damage the feather so um but with the hope you take it and you, you grease it up real good with that soap and then you you make that quill down to a point so that it doesn't have any feather to fly with and it all sticks you know it's kind of like hairspray how long does that but, stay uh, on the wing like that that's up for debate you know if you give them let them bathe then it's going to come back if it's yeah. if the bird didn't any good but it could also wreck the feather too yeah so i mean i don't know some say it won't wreck other i i kind of from what i see it kind of does and there's always like because I've, I've picked up some older homers um some older white homers just for breeding for more whites and you know i've been like well you know they've they've had a couple of babies here they've been here for like a year and so then that's when I would start doing the taping and just seeing. But even then, I feel like it's still kind of a chance. But I mean, that's another thing, too. They say, you know, if the bird can have, you know, another mate and breed, that it's more likely to rehome to that spot again. With several racers to fly when I first got started, because I wanted, you know, I had some, a few babies, but not too many. And he gave me a, a recessive red and couple of white birds that took a while to get well there was there was a couple of other ones and i put them i put them in the cage next to the window when i was out you know in observation or whatever yeah and i always noticed they were looking out the windows i took them out to the loft and they were only in there for i don't know it feels like a very short time maybe a week or so 
Okay. And I chose two to lose. The one headed west after one lap and we looked back. And the other one, it went out and sat on the power line all day. And when the snow went down, the damn thing disappeared. <laughs> what about powders? Do you know our powders kind of like rollers? Do you know about resettling and flying those? Because you've got some powders that you fly. So I can't tell you for sure, but I know that they've got some Homer in them. Yeah. So, you know, they're going to want to, they're going to want to stick around, but they fly, you know, 33 miles for sure. They'll home. But the thing is, is, if you've got a homing pigeon, if you've had it for three or four months at your house, it may take off and get lost and never never make it back to where it came from you know so it's a kind of a chancy thing yeah and that's why i like starting off with um getting young birds you know young birds that have never been flown that's always kind of the best bet or that like you said the very best bet is to just breed your own and get those babies those babies will always come back regardless of what you're flying with you know high flyer roller powder whatever homer um you know, that's that's the well, home. I, I, these things breed so good once they get started they breed so good mm-hmm. and it's kind of you know if you're they're fun to raise that they're, they're fun to do everything with i think if you've got the birds to breed with man it doesn't take that long at all so you've got flowers yeah. before you know it you know and it's all worth it it's you get so much better behaving birds out of ones you've raised. You know, they can come back better. That's their home. That's where they're born and raised. Yeah. That's and just what I, how I feel about it. Yeah. And they're more used to you also, which makes all the handling and everything easier too. Then the, the next question was a real simple one here. Well, maybe not. When is breeding season? And I guess that depends on where you are, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, it depends on where you are for sure. Because right now, we're breeding. Because uh, it's a, it's a it's mostly a light thing, right? Fourteen hours to sixteen hours of light is what they're looking for. Well, yeah. So birds, all birds, as far as I know, and most animals in nature, uh, and even plants for that matter, uh, require extended periods of light to reproduce. It's energy, you know. It's it's it tells our body to to wake up and and that kind of stuff like out here we have no shortage of of sunlight but we have a shortage of daylight right now Um, our days are short i have the lights in the breeding loft these guys are going you know full swing right now okay Uh, i know uh my friend down in down south here he's got birds on eggs right now too we've got we got plenty of, of sunshine, you know. But in other parts, it's too cold. Like now, Gary's saying that he won't start till till March or April breeding. Oh. It's gonna be cold and crappy. Yeah. So I guess it just kind of depends. If you're breeding for racers, you wanna. I want them suckers starting now. The older the bird, the stronger the bird. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, you can get some and, birds out pretty quick then. Oh, well, see, that's the thing. If I get eggs down in in December, then I can ban them babies, you know, first of the year, bingo, bango. Yeah. That's what you really want, you know, if you're doing, especially if you're doing, like, uh, competition kind of stuff. The older the bird, the better bird you're going to have. You know, when it comes time for competition, I I think so. Nothing ever looks good little. You know, you get your late hatches and stuff like that. Uh, if you bang those off for this year, next year comes around. Well, that thing's supposed to be a yearling. <laughs> yeah, and really, I think that I mean, you know, unless you have a, a good loft setup where you're separating cocks and hens. And, you know, you're the one who's really in control of it, man. These just breed, they'll breed when they're ready. They'll just kind of do it on their own in that way. I mean, some of these open loft setups where they'll just breed all year. And they so, will too. They'll yeah. breed when they're in the mood. Mm-hmm. Some of these breeders are better than others, but they'll, 
you know but some of like that white bear you have she was you know it seemed like whenever she felt like it it wasn't just all the time you know yeah strong good flyers you know i think it just depends on on where you're at are they inside or outside Do they get enough light for me it's right now until they stop laying eggs yeah and i will think i think most people beginning of the year is you know because we're also now the days are getting a little bit longer now in january and uh you know that, that definitely helps the light thing and the vitamin d and all that stuff and pretty short days right now aren't we when does it you know, oh the, the solstice was the 21 december 21 so that's already happened so technically oh, the days well, sweet yeah so we'll get longer days now i like that a lot so i wanted to ask you this and I'm... we, we kind of talked about this uh on the phone earlier the other day and uh so racing pigeons roller pigeons powders high flyers the fancy what is your favorite why out of those yeah or if um, there's if there's some i missed too i don't know i mean you know because that's the thing you know we uh you know we, we we try to touch on everything but everyone has their favorites and everyone kind of has a, a mix or whatever but i mean because um, you, you kind of got a lot of a little bit of everything going on over there well my favorites as far uh, my favorites as far as ease of use <laughs> we'll say um have been the rollers because i put well now let me clarify i put a whole lot of work into putting together a pretty nice setup so that it was pretty easy to use but at the same time the rollers there they don't require a lot of i don't have to put a bunch of miles on my car to fly them once i get them trained i keep them on a schedule and they do pretty good you know what i'm saying it's it's a good backyard flyer situation those have been those are my favorites to work with because they they don't take a lot of space they don't require a lot of space they're not aggressive compared to uh, the horseman powders are terribly aggressive they beat each other up for bad mm. um the high flyers i don't know yet i don't have any results on them I, they're just birds right now <laughs> but uh you know, I, I like I really like the rollers. The homers, there there's a lot of there's a lot of ways you can screw the homers up. You know. I mean you can screw a roller up just as good, but I'm I'm doing the best with them. And they're they're my favorite at this point. You? Who you got? I'm only I'm trying to keep it to two breeds right now. So I got my parlor rollers and I got racing homers. Whatever it is, I, I like birds that you can engage with and you know, I, I like my son does the Birmingham rollers, and I really enjoy watching them. Especially if you got a good set of rollers, you know, you can see them really fall, and you know, they are a really fun bird to watch for sure. I like, I like doing releases. the The driving is a thing, though. You know, like you're saying, you know, you, if you're really trying to do racing and stuff, which I'm not. There's no race club up here, and even if there was, I couldn't afford it. You know, so it's just an enjoyment thing. You know, I do white dove releases, and that's that's fun to do and of course the parlor rollers you know because i go out to the park with them and let them go so you know birds i can play with so that's fun i mean i i do really like the english magpies i think eventually i'll get into that breed again for the fancy side of things and really try to focus on that but um that's that's down the road there's a lot of breeds to go through but uh you know there's times when i I just too many breeds at once i couldn't really focus on any and I'm really hoping for a good breeding season out of these parlor rollers this year. Yeah, we're going to try to uh, try to go up to that hurricane show, make it work this year. I hope it does. That, that'll be coming up in February, so that's not too far away. Represent the podcast. Let people know we're here. <laughs> Are you still going to give out uh, Speedos with the logo on them, or how's that going to work? I just got to find the right person to give them to when they come up, you know? No, yeah, we are going to try to have... Uh, have some some stickers or something like that and um i talked with uh, christian at foul play he might have a table up there in hurricane so i might try to weasel in on one of his tables and throw some stuff up so yeah this is the time of the year where a lot of uh, you know the shows are going to be starting back up you know they got the 
you know, here in the States, the national is going to be in Kentucky. That's going to be a big one. And that's in February. I think, I mean, a lot of, you know, people like, you know, breeding seasons getting started. So young birds are going to be coming out. People are going to be conditioning their birds for the shows and just that time of the year for it. And I'm sure it's the same all over the world, really. What kind of pigeons they got in Kentucky? Oh, that's going to be like 2000 birds, I think. Really? So yeah, they should have, they should have everything. All, that, that would be an awesome show to go to. Yeah. Well, all pigeons are. <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> that was actually one of the other questions was uh can you explain the genetics behind the tumbler and roller pigeons and it's like you know you could call it genetics you could call it selective breeding to you know simplify it even more but i mean they all you know the fact that so many different breeds and shapes and styles come from that blue bar rock dove they breed so fast and so much that you know, if we're looking for something, then, you know, I mean, it still goes on today. You know, that's why some of the best Birmingham rollers are going to come from guys who compete with it because they're going to be paying a lot of attention to the birds that roll the best and get the best and perform the best, you know, according to that breed and what it's supposed to do. You know, it's crazy. Like the, uh, the parlor rollers, you know, I'm on a couple of Facebook groups for those guys and people are like, Oh man, let me buy your coals. I want to buy your coals, you know, just because there's not a lot of them. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I get it. Like, you know, maybe you can make some of those coals work, but they're coals. Like, I don't know. It's just you, you should want to start off with something a little bit better if you can. The fact of the matter is, every bird that you are buying from somebody is their coal. They're not yeah. selling you their best. Yeah. That's truth right there. Anytime you go to a swap and sell or the for sale area at a show, you're buying their coals. You can find the breeder and ask to buy their champion and see what they say, but that's just how it works. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sell my best birds. You're not gonna sell your best birds. Right. Sorry. It's not gonna happen. Anybody tells you that they are selling you their best birds, probably your best for a sale. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm like yeah, or. Or are you just uh, getting fed something there? Well, my friend's giving me some of his best best rollers. You know, they're not. He's not going to give me his best. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes, I mean, if someone really does have really high quality birds, their coals are really good birds. I guess it does depend on where you're getting them and who you're getting them from. But you can't, you can't breed them all, and you can't feed them all. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes somebody's coal bird is going to be a better bird than what you could buy at a show sometimes. I mean, it's just, it's, it's kind of a crapshoot, but yeah, as a, as a general rule, that's, you're always, you're always buying coals. Well, there was a few more questions, but we can save those for another episode here. Uh, like I said, I, I know that there were some other questions in there, but they were kind of towards conditioning and nutrition and we're going to have people on here that are real experts in that and we'll save those those guests that we bring on so we're not we're not disregarding them we definitely appreciate the questions you know that's two questions at us we'll try to find people that can give you good answers if we can't answer them ourselves and we're coming you guys can just oh yeah you've been using that yeah man i like it a lot really as i give it to them they perk right up can you uh, can you tell the listeners what, how, what you're getting, how you're mixing it, and what what specifically it's kind of helping you with? Look up how to make oregano oil, and there are recipes. Mine is not exactly the same. The two main ingredients are oregano and olive oil. I was I was recommended to use a product that's kind of a I feel like it's a kind of a high end product very expensive stuff it was 50 bucks a quart looked into it and it says it's oregano oil oh, okay well so i talked to another guy and he's a big time racer and he doesn't vaccinate or any of that stuff unless he's racing them he said he feeds them the same stuff but he doesn't buy the pigeon grade he buys human grade so i looked that stuff up and it was like 20 bucks an ounce so i just made my own it's been working pretty good but there's lots of recipes out there and they're about all the same and it's just how to make oregano oil i've definitely heard people say that's kind of like a cure-all too 
it's got medicinal purposes. Yeah. It used to be used as medicine back in the old times, you know. Now we're on this Western medicine thing. I did it away with it. Not a lot of information on it, but check it out. It's it's not bad for them at all. How you do you do you put it in their feet or their water? I'm putting it on the feet. Okay. I just put it in the bowl and then I just shake the feet in and get it kind of coated, you know. Yeah. But you can put it in the water too. The oil just um, that's the delivery agent, you know. That's where it hangs out. If you just had straight oregano extract, it'd be it wouldn't be oil. I'll just say that it wouldn't be very soluble either, probably. Yeah. All right, we're definitely coming up on the clock here, so I'm gonna wrap this thing up here and definitely uh, keep the questions coming, you guys. You can just hit us up through Messenger on Facebook or put it right on the page, or you know, actually through the different uh, platforms that the podcast is on. You can email through those as well. So keep them coming. We'll, we'll try to our best to find people that are experts in this. And yeah, we got. Uh, Bob Nolan's coming on. I'm pretty excited about that. That was one of the guys when we first started doing this. I was like, man, Bob Nolan would be a great one to have on. And we're real happy to have him coming on because he's going to be just a wealth of information. I've read so many articles in the old American Pigeon Journals that he's done. And he's written multiple books. He did the NPA 100-year anniversary book. And just a real, real knowledgeable, real nice guy. So he'll be coming on. And he's trumpeters and, uh, and show racers, ain't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's messed around with a lot of breeds, but yeah, trumpeters right now, I think, are one of his big ones. He just had a bunch in the pageant down there. I don't know. I haven't got the, the catalog. It's going to have all the results. I know that the NPA quarterly just came out, and they have some of the results for who got, like, the top awards and stuff. But So we'll, we'll put that there on the Facebook, too, for you guys to throw some questions out to him. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye-bye.